Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of uh nightly wrap-up show. I uh, hope everybody had a good day of trading. Hope everybody uh, stayed out of trouble. Uh, wild uh, times in the market for a market that's kind of going sideways. Very wild market. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, if you are uh, new to the channel, please like, subscribe, uh, and share. We would love to for you to come aboard full-time as a viewer uh, to kind of go on this journey with us for an unbiased uh, look at the market. So big story today uh, after the close, and we'll get to everything else in a second, uh, was Apple or is Apple. Uh, Apple came out with earnings. Uh, looks like here uh, earnings uh, $1.52 versus 143, uh, about a little less than $95 billion in revenues versus 93 uh, expected. Uh, revenues were down a little, little more than two and a half percent a year over year against the second straight quarter of uh, lower uh, lower growth. And you could see the initial reaction uh, was a jump in the shares. Um, you know, they, they, they let a lot of their uh, revenues with successful sales of iPhones. Again, what, what a uh, struggling economy uh, that we are having and people complaining this, that, and the third. I mean, for, for them to uh, still do really, really well for, you know, 12, 13, $1,400 iPhones is, is, is pretty remarkable. Like, I, granted, I, I understand uh, they do have plans that you could pay like 25, 30, 40 bucks a month uh, for these phones. And it's and it pretty much everybody can afford them. But it's still pretty, you know, pretty remarkable that a 12, 13, $1,400 phone uh, is still the driving force uh, behind uh, their business. Right now, the stock is basically up uh, a buck after the close. We'll see what happens uh, on the conference call. I, I still like these levels here. Um, you know, I, I look, I, I think this two levels here initially got rejected off the top of the range as soon as the numbers came out here. The fact that it's not rallying, and again, by the time you watch this broadcast, uh, maybe the stock is rallying, or, you know, again, you know, like I'm recording this at 4.57 p.m. By the time some of you guys watch this, you know, broadcast, will be 7, 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night, so the stock could be uh, anywhere. But if it doesn't rally tonight, guys, watch the bottom of the range here, because if it loses the 20-day moving average, especially if not even today, but for tomorrow, if it loses the 20-day moving average, it could start getting hit all the way down to the 160 level. And the same thing for the upside. If it starts getting above like this 171 level, if the conference call is good, uh, maybe the stock starts driving, it starts pulling uh, everything up uh, with it. Uh, other names are uh, making a, a you know, play today. Uh, you know, AMD, after a day that, uh, after a day that, just to give you an idea how wild this day is, uh, after a day of coming out with pretty crappy earnings, uh, if you guys remember last night in the video, I was watching for a downside confirmation. Never took out the previous day's law, which is very, very odd considering uh, it missed on earnings. And we understand why. Uh, in the middle of the day, uh, they came out with news that you know they are teaming up with uh, Microsoft, right, for another like AI project. Again, use the word AI. You know, for all the kids out there, you want to get your your stock notice and stock moving, use the word AI. That's a hot realm. Again, there's a whole love triangle between uh, NVIDIA, uh, Apple, excuse me, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Google, and now AMD. Uh, AMD had this massive, massive spike intraday. At the same time, NVIDIA uh, had a really ugly move intraday. And again, it didn't look, doesn't look ugly, but it really went from uh, 78 all the way down to 72 to kind of re recover. So a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, more mess messing is going on uh, in the banking sector. Uh, WAL, uh, there was a chatter this morning. I think it was the Financial Times that reported that they were, you know, considering maybe a sale or strategic uh, alternatives. Well, why is that a big deal? Only 48, you know, 12 hours later, uh, to a 12 hour earlier, Pat and W said exactly the same thing, and the stock was 50%. So the idea that WAL, the chatter was that they were going to put themselves up for sale, again, was like waving, you know, waving the white flag. And the stock literally went from 23 all the way down to 11. And then the company came out. Uh, they refuted the story. Stock made a little bit of recovery. A lot of crazy stuff. FHN, uh, FHN, another, you know, just uh, you could see all the bodies hit the floor. And this is why this market is so damn aggressive without a macro move in either direction. FHN apparently terminated uh, their plans to merge with uh, TD. This stock got hit as well. Uh, you ca you're constantly seeing a, a lot of names continuously getting hit 
Uh, Schwab, I saw a lot of puts, a lot of puts coming in uh, short-term expiration. They were coming in for the May and the June of 42 and a half, 40s. Uh, something to watch in the next couple of days. I don't think it's going to it's going to be imminent because the stock rallied today. But you know, we definitely want to keep an eye uh, below the three thirteen lows here. That's how every one of these stocks, when they start losing the bottom of the channel here, that's when the stocks really get uh, hit. Uh, on on good news front today, uh, Coin uh, come out with pretty good numbers, right? Stock is uh, spiking after the close. Uh, Lyft today, we we were talking about this all day in the webinar. They were coming for the. Uh, the tens, the weekly tens, the nine and a halves uh, stock is getting hit here uh, after hours. Uh, Shopify came out with pretty good earnings this morning. Uh, pretty, pretty strong trend day the whole day. So you're getting a mixed bag of, you know, from good, some bad, some ugly. But if you look at the numbers, and this is kind of where, you know, kind of threw me for a loop a little bit. Like, like I knew the NASDAQ was strong. I, you know, again, I don't follow the Dow uh, that strongly because it's only 30 stocks versus, the NASDAQ, that's 100 versus the S&P, that's 500. But I looked at some, you know, I, I definitely, definitely, as we are speaking right now, Apple uh, is starting to rally here a little bit. So I want to see kind of what's going on there a little bit later. Um, but, you know, I, I looked at the numbers and, you know, because if you look what happened today, the Dow was down 300 points. The Dow went red for the year, right? Which is very, very uh, peculiar considering if you look at the NASDAQ, or the QQQs, they are still up 18%. So you can see in kind of what we've been talking about for a long, long time, there's no such thing as a stock market anymore. It's just a market full of stocks. And you can see that a huge disconnect between the NASDAQ up 18% and the Dow that just went red uh, for the year. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, S&P uh, still up uh, 6% in the year. And the IWM, they, you know, you figure all these little small cap crap stocks are flying all over the place. Uh, IWM is down uh, 2% for the year. So there is a lot of disconnect in the market. The more important part of kind of what, where, where I'm sitting from the beta world, I see a lot of stocks, you know, it's very, very tough to turn around and say they're getting weaker. Because again, like I said, we're, we're still up 18% for the year, but what we think is not rallying, right? I think that's the most important point. They're not rallying. Even the days that are strong, you're getting two days kind of lackluster. Now again, you could turn around and say, well, you can make a case after a big move, they're just resting. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Like look at Microsoft, for example, right? Microsoft, you know, Microsoft had a really great move on earnings and it's kind of going sideways. And that's kind of the point. It's kind of going sideways, not really going up, not really going down. I've been watching for a pivot. Today marks day three. For all you guys who've been watching this broadcast and following me for years and years and years, you kind of know Tesla's my favorite stock. The same chart as we're seeing with Microsoft, right? Like going flat for like five days. This is now day three. I have not traded Tesla now in three days. Look at look at this flag. You could turn around and say this is a bull flag. You could turn around and say a bear flag. You could turn around saying it's you know it's it's a you know it's 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 a flag of uh, you know some third world country. I don't know what this is anymore, right? But the point is, eventually something has to give. The same same way something has to give on Microsoft. Something has to give on Tesla. Eventually, this thing's going to fall. We saw a lot of put buying in the name, not a lot of not a lot of call buying, but the stock still doesn't want to break the bottom of the range. Something to be watched. Uh, Amazon, another name, right? You kind of, it's just kind of going sideways. There's days that the market opens up strong, then it kind of backs away, then the stock comes down, starts rallying back into supply. Again, it's just kind of stuck here. Meta that had a great run into earnings. You know, it's kind of getting a little bit of a rollover effect. You know, something that we have to watch for tomorrow. It's It, it held the bottom of the range here below the five-day moving average a couple of days in a row. Look, if this is you know, if this is a scenario day three that they do pull the plug and and Apple does sell off on earnings, then maybe we could start maybe looking at uh, at Meta to the downside. Uh, maybe, maybe, we'll see, maybe. we Again, we always like to be prepared from both sides. Uh, yesterday, uh, we talked about uh, spies that it held twice below this uh, 407 level. Well, they lost the 407 level, right? And and they did hold the bottom of the range here. Hence, a lot of names started pushing back. Uh, the Qs we talked about last night, uh, the bulls needed to defend that 16 level. Guess where the market closed, right? Right at 16. So there's a lot of stuff going on, but there's not a lot of stuff going on at the same time. And if you are, for example, a technology beta trader, right? That's what I am. I trade the same stocks basically every day. And when they're sitting in a channel like really, really tight, you know, my hands are tying behind my back. So it's very, very tough to start, uh, you know, very, very easy to kind of start looking at other things to trade, right? We had a really great move 
on Key, and congratulations for all you guys who came in short. Key and Age Band, we talked about it last night. For some of you guys had Pack W runners. Phenomenal, right? Absolutely phenomenal. There's nothing wrong there. But as far as the meat and potatoes day trade, let's come out of a channel, guns blazing with option flow, the market is just crickets. Again, does Apple take the market out of the channel? Now the market, now Apple's going down, right? That's kind of where you can see it's, it's what, what basically Apple is doing right now and how we're describing what's going on is basically what the market's doing. It's just no flow right now for a couple of days. But the point is it, you, you're not supposed to judge yourself on the basis of a day-to-day -day situation. When the market goes, you want it, everything to go in one direction. You can't have something strong, something's weak. You need everything. That, you know, if, you, if you've been watching this broadcast for a while, this is kind of known as the Christmas tree effect. Some stocks are green, some stocks are red. We don't want that. We either want them all green or all red. That's when the disconnect starts connecting again and things are starting to move uh, more seamlessly. It's, uh, tomorrow, no big earnings. Sorry, I'm sorry, AMC, I don't... I don't want to, you know, I don't want to offend anybody. AMC reports tomorrow. Um, but, you know, all the big technology needs for this week are are finally done. We obviously want to watch levels for uh, the indexes tomorrow. Guys, watch this 50-day moving average. This is going to be a big, big deal here. Um, you know, the, the area here, you know, this 403 level, right? This 403 level needs to be defended, right? That's the 50-day moving average on the queues. Uh, any close tomorrow below the 50-day moving average, again, if you guys know, this is the 50-day moving average, right? Just watch this light blue line. Any close below starts getting the market lower. So this 403 is going to be a very, very important level for the bulls tomorrow to defend. Because if they don't, uh, again, whoever has control of the 50-day moving average is going to control uh, a very, very healthy portion of what happens next. Uh, for the QQQs, uh, again, we have to watch this 315 level. So in other words, if Apple gives up earnings and starts getting hit, if the Qs lose 315, right? You see the low here? The March 27 low is 315. Today's low is 315. Can anybody guess where the downside pivot is? Drum roll, please. Right? 315. So 315 uh, line in the sand. If, and if everything gets pulled, you have room all the way down to 311 and then 309. So hopefully one way or another, uh, if you guys remember when Microsoft and Meta came out with earnings, it pulled the market up. We had a great rally, but if if Apple starts dragging down the market and starts losing today's ranges and in the macro range, we are going to have some aggressive pulls as well. So guys have a great night. Usually I don't do a Thursday night update, but since I didn't do one on Tuesday, I had some errands to run. I kind of uh, substituted for that. So hopefully everybody's doing well. Remember guys, especially new traders, you don't need to trade every single day. You don't need to trade every single second. Remember every stock is moving. This is the stock market, right? The market's open. So every stock is going to move, but just keep in mind, not everything is tradable. Guys have a great night, everybody. God bless. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.